you guys just can't get enough plaid. So today we're gonna go inside and take a look at a plaid and answer some of your questions and so forth. Remember, like always, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you really like this video and you like the stuff that I showed off and covered on it, make sure you hit this video with a thumbs up. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at this plaid. All right, so this is the new UI for the Model S Plaid. Now, this UI, so we've got the home button here. Uh, this brings you to the car interface. Um, and the first thing is, is right, there's no stocks. So with no stocks, how do you put the car in drive or reverse? Well, there's a, this is essentially your stock. It's like the road. And if you press on the brake and just slide this up, it puts the car in drive or if you tap here it puts the car in park or if you scroll here it puts it in reverse so I'll put the car back in park here and that's as simple as it is just putting the car into drive reverse or or park now, and then you've got your radio controls here but what's really cool about this new interface is that now this radio can be brought down and then it can also somehow can be moved somehow so oh there we go uh so we go like this and then we can drag it and we can dock it over to the right side and then the, now your passenger can access it and then we can bring it back down make it small and i think you only have right and left access to it Let's see if we can put it in the middle no so it's just left or right are the two docks where you can dock your uh, your player on so and then of course the options are still radio phone streaming Spotify tune in uh, let's go ahead and check that we'll go to balance and options yeah it's pretty much exactly like what we're used to so uh, let's get out of that and that's the that's the radio controls and then of course your uh, notifications are a lot bigger here and then we can I think swipe down to get rid of it um, and then down here, we've got phone. Phone is pretty much like we're used to. Calls, messages, contacts, favorites, calendar. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth. Then we've got uh, you know your streaming services, whatever you want to log in streaming. Here are all the options for that. Here's the rear camera. And then I think this rear camera can be made uh, bigger somehow, because I saw it taking up the whole screen before. So we'll get back into that. Um, and then down here, we've got this other dock and this dock is really cool it's really easy to access you can just go like this and you get your stuff on and then whatever you want here if I want to bring toy box over to the left or have it here or I think maybe you could just rearrange here so if you want to move things maybe not but it looks like you can oh you could bring it down here and I can say let's say if I want my rear view camera up here I can bring it up here and now it's easy to get there so this is a fully customizable menu however you want to access it which is really really cool and then it just pops away when you want it you just click it and it comes back up so all your stuff is here let's go ahead and check out the theater theater is the same same options here there is a new game it's called sky force and so this has two players supports controllers um, or the touch screen so there's that hey there this is editing raj just watching back the video i wanted to call out that there is no cyberpunk uh it's not loaded on the car maybe it might become available later on but i am hearing rumblings that the cyberpunk that was displayed on uh, during the presentation wasn't actually loaded in the car it was just merely being used as a demonstration to show you how powerful the computer was so that leaves a lot to be asked here on whether cyberpunk is actually gonna become available in the car will there be an app store of games i i don't know but right now they're not coming with cyberpunk they're not coming with witcher they're not coming with uh, any of those big triple a titles uh Maybe we'll see them in the future, maybe we won't, but just know that the gaming computer that's in there is pretty crazy, and maybe this is a call out from Tesla to say, like, hey, if you got something dope, uh, send it to us, and, and we'll put it in the car or something. I don't know, but quick call out. 
theater's the same, toy box is the same. It does have the horn sounds and the, the, the boom box feature. And then, um, and then you've got your, your browser, which is uh, cool. Uh, so yeah, so we went through that, we went through that. You got your calendar, your media, your thing. So let's go through what everyone's most interested in in the actual menu, right? So now when you hit the menu, it's much bigger. It takes up a little bit more than half the screen. And now you've got access to a whole lot of things um, and they're just bigger and more obvious, easier to access and easier to get to. Instead of reaching all the way up here, um, they're over here and they're brought closer to the driver's side. So you've got suspension, glove box, folding mirrors, neutral, charge pour, there's a lot here. Let's go into pedals and steering. Now acceleration, you get three different options, chill, sport, or plaid, and then of course we all saw a drag strip mode. That's what we were using to launch the car. Ready to launch? Shit. <laughs> this is crazy! Oh my fucking god! Oh my gosh! Oh, 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 shit. Shit. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then you can change your steering comfort. So somebody was asking about that. Um, and then this is what everyone is talking about, auto shift out of park. So we'll test that out in a little bit here. Suspension, this is really cool, really good UI to show you the compression and rebound on the suspension and then how you wanna adjust the suspension in there as well and what you want the default. Charging rates are right here, uh, autopilot. Now, so for autopilot, I think here, everything else looks exactly the same. There is full self-driving uh, on this, so this one does have the FSD beta uh, on there. Um, as far as that, everything else is pretty much the same. Locks are the same. Lights are the same, display is the same. Uh, trips, this is kind of a nice little, uh, oh, this is what took place of the cards that used to be on the left-hand side for Model 3 and Y. Um, all the rest looks the same. Service and, yeah, and then uh, software. Um, I don't wanna, uh, let's see, I'll go on software. I'm gonna blur out the VIN here, um, but it's running on 10.2, um, so there's that, but that's, it as far as software. Now, if I wanted to get, oh, okay, so swipe down and that brings back, I mean, this map looks amazing seeing it this big. It's so easy to read and see, but um, yeah, that's that. Okay, so here we are with the HVAC. Um, we're very familiar with the HVAC controls. Obviously, this is a Model S. It's got, you know, biohazard mode uh, and so forth, but this uh, Model S actually has, uh-oh, I lost it. Which one is it again? There it is. It actually has ventilated seats. So if we click on the seat icon, we can make it three, what are the, what, these are not gonna be bacon strips, it's gonna be like cold bacon strips, but uh, let's yeah. see, turn them on and, oh yeah, you could choose between heat or cold. And if you choose heat, it turns to red, cool turns to blue, so. Okay, so you can feel the air coming down the back, which is really nice. I don't think it's coming out from the bottom, but it's definitely coming out from the, from the back. You can definitely feel the air. It's a nice, pleasant, cooling feeling. Um, this is much needed. I love, my back gets sweaty when I'm uh, riding in, in my Tesla, so having ventilated seats is, is very, very convenient and cool. Now, you'll notice that there was no mention of the screen tiltability, and a lot of people have been asking about that. The screen tiltability is present, but it cannot be used right now. It'll come over a software update later. See, without the software update, you still can't move this screen. It's, uh, it's on there. There's a slight little wiggle, but yeah, it's not to push or pull or anything of that sort. So this will be motorized after software update. Okay, so the question about the yoke, everyone wants to know about it. If you saw my crazy video that I posted on Twitter, you saw an endless spinning yoke. Well, it's not endless spinning, that was just a demo uh, yoke, but this is the real yoke. Uh, let me show you the, the buttons. So here are the buttons on the yoke. You'll see here, there's the horn. Oh, there it is, just a light pressure on that. Um, you've got your speed control button right there, windshield wiper. Uh, voice command and on the left hand side we've got our high beams and our left and uh, right turn blinkers the middle does not function as a horn it's a solid tesla piece it doesn't move it's containing the airbag but uh that's the whole thing now as far now as far as the yoke is concerned how many turns does it take to fully turn right or left so if i turn the yoke one full turn and a half that's full right and we turn a full turn back and that's centered and that's the same way either way. Um, of course, driving it, 
you've got a nice uh, thing to rest your elbow on here and you just put your hand just like this. It's actually really easy and quite comfortable. Check this out. So this feels very comfortable just resting my shoulder or my elbow on the armrest here and then just driving just like this. And then when you need to make a turn, utilizing the palm and making a full turn. Now, of course, you can make a turn with two hands. Let me show you the different options. Okay, so as you can see, the yoke driving is actually not bad. It's pretty cool and it's really nice to just be able to see out in front of you and not have to see this steering wheel. It gives me good visibility of the center display. Let me show you what it looks like sitting in the driver's seat with this uh, steering wheel. Now, some of the things to call out here is it's still rocking the nice black Alcantara all throughout their headliner, um, but we're missing the, the center, the middle center right up here. There is uh, nothing present there. We've got our dome lights left and right, and I believe those speakers have moved to up here. Right there, there's the speaker. Alcantara headliner. Still got the center display. Now the door handles have all changed now, right? We've got an actual push button to open the door. And it's actually not a physical moving button. It's a capacitative button. So you just, it doesn't actually move. It's a touch button. Okay, so here's the Alcantara uh, charger. And when you drop your phone there, it works perfectly. This is the 12 Pro. You'll see there's still another like almost two inches above and another maybe finger depth on the side of space. And then you've got your uh, emergency blinker down here. Everything is capacitative. There's no actual physical button that moves. So that's really cool. Center armrest here. And what's cool about it is like when you lift it up, it's actually got like a little magnet watch. See how it just kind of grabs it? You just like, so that's kind of nice little, nice little touch. Yeah. You can tuck the tray, and then you have like some little secrets back here. Oh, that's, oh, that's yeah, huge. That's yeah, you can fit the whole, this whole can. Look at that. <laughs> and there's actually still space back in there. Yeah, yeah. Is There's nothing back there though, right? It's just a no. cavernous hole. Yeah. Oh my God, my entire arm, I'm elbow in. <laughs> Holy, that's crazy. So when you take this out, then this closes like that and, and then just, like, you've got this you got yeah a little shorter shallow compartment that you can reach and then you can close this and this opens and then this is that thing and then i don't think no this one doesn't move. oh wait it does shift it back so if you don't want the cup holders you can tuck it away yeah. and then down here you've got um two usb-c ports right here and then whatever that little button or thing is nice I'm loving this. as far as the doors they've got this nice uh carbon fiber dash that goes all throughout it goes down here it goes all the way across um and then the the beautiful white here i'm not gonna touch it because we don't want to stain it um but this centerpiece right here this is actually fabric let me show you that now, one of the things I did want to call out is if you look to the right of the dash, this dash that goes right back here, it almost looks like it's a screen. I don't, let me see if I can show it to you on the camera, but there's like a screen there. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if that something's going to show up there at some point. 
in the future via software update or something like that but it actually goes throughout in fact where the center con the center display or the the rear screen display there's more gloss right over here you'll see and so that goes across the whole thing like that and uh and the vents are actually just below it uh and i believe above it so it's a little bit different okay so let's talk about this rear screen it's very slick and cool to have something like this it's very convenient now is it ideally placed maybe not uh you know as i'm sitting here i'm sitting in my seat this seat is very far pushed back. I can still have full visibility into the screen. In fact, if somebody were sitting in the middle, you would not have visibility into the screen because their knees would be coming in the way. It's quite low to the ground. Now, if I'm sitting here like this, I'm looking at it at about that much of an angle to see the screen. So hopefully that gives you an idea of just how much, uh, you know, you have to look down to see it. Um, I would say this is a good, maybe 20 degrees down uh, from my, you know, looking forward, I'm lowering it down 20 and then moving it over. So, you know, looking down, moving over. Yep, that's about how much to see it. So I could tell that like this might, you know, start to hurt after a little bit. I don't think it's really meant for long drives, but it's definitely convenient and handy for those of us with kids to be able to to do this. So, uh, yeah, that's. I I'd still actually would probably prefer just something right here so that way you're just looking straight. Um, and they have iPad mounts that you can connect and, and just watch straight. It might be a little bit easier, but I'll have to fully test this when you can actually pair individual headphones with or something of that sort would be a lot nicer and easier. We'll see. Okay, so now we're in the rear seat, right? This is the rear screen. Um, most of you guys have seen this. You've got uh, basically four different options, right? You've got your uh, music right here. Now it, back here you I don't think you can add a device back here. Next you've got your airflow controls and I have to say I don't know where this air is coming from but it feels pretty damn amazing. So I can feel vents from right up here and and down here. So there's vents on top and bottom that are both converging uh, to blow air and it's quite powerful. Yeah this is feeling really good. If I was a rear passenger I'd be pretty happy here. So that's that's kind of cool. Now let's uh, turn this down, okay. Then you, of course you've got your seat uh, heaters, which is really convenient for the rear passengers to be able to turn on and off very easily. Now, unfortunately in the rear, uh, we don't have ventilated seats. The seats do have a ventilated look and feel to it, uh, but they do not actually blow cold air. You do, however, have different air controls for the rear as well as the front. So maybe Rom wants to be freezing cold up front and I wanna be, you know, burning up in the back, sure. we can do that. Yep. Uh, so that's kind of cool, the um, the differences. And then there's two USB-C uh, ports down here below the rear screen, so that is handy. Okay, another question is, is as you saw here, um, we've, got, uh, we've got media, right? Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Twitch. We've got the air controls, the vents, the music, a player that you can dock with your phone, but we don't have games back here, so there's no way to game separately in the rear uh, if you wanted to play some games. Not as of right now uh, on launch, so yeah. And then this is the slickest thing, right? Being able to go in here, go on YouTube, watch whatever you wanna watch here. Let's have it load here and I'm gonna test something out. Let's, uh, let's just do a shameless plug, plug here. The, yes, the keyboard is really small, um, but let's just... Uh, Let's just go with it. It's pretty nice to have it back here though. Okay, go ahead, shift the car into drive. Okay, so we're actually in reverse, reverse right now. Yeah. And then here is the video. It's still playing here on YouTube. So yes, can you watch while someone drives? The answer is yes, which is awesome for kids uh, or anybody in the back seats. The question is, is how do you hear this? Because I, I can't turn this up. So the music is playing. Okay, turn it down, I don't wanna get copywritten but this sound is not playing. So how do we get this sound to come in? I don't, that's what I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. Remember Elon said you could connect multiple Bluetooth? That's what I wanna try now. So let's connect another Bluetooth. These are my AirPods. I'm gonna just open them up here, put them into pairing mode. You see how it's blinking white? And here is the Bluetooth on the screen. And you'll see it's searching for device and it does not see the AirPods. 
even though they're blinking. So, uh, right now, cannot pair, you know, Bluetooth headphones with the car. Uh, that That's a little bit of a concern, but uh, no fret. That'll probably come via software update. Yeah. Okay, so right now, the sound from this YouTube video is now playing. Uh, try to play music there in the front. Choo -choo -choo. Uh, let's see. Test the favorites. No, so my YouTube video is one that the sound is working off of, and you are not able to play any music. So let's go on real progress. YouTube? Yep. Huh. Yep. This is a plaid test drive. Um, and yours is. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. So you can't play any music right now, right? So if I pause my video. Okay, and I'm going to get out of YouTube. Now try to play music up there. Turn down, 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 turn down. Okay, cool. I don't want to get copyrighted. Okay, so as of right now, you cannot play audio. If you're watching YouTube, it's taking up all the speakers in the car. So if you're a parent, you obviously don't want to hear your kids' shows in the back playing throughout the car. And I don't know. I only have AirPods on me. I don't have any other pair of headphones to try. Can I Bluetooth pair a set of headphones? So as of right now, you cannot do audio separate in the back for Bluetooth headphones. It'll probably come by a software update. I can almost guarantee it. Okay, so Netflix is on. The guys in the back are watching. We've moved all the audio to the rear of the car and it's not too bad, right? I mean, I guess it's doable. Can you hear in the front though? I mean, we can, but it's not. It's not super loud. How does it sound back there? Sounds good. It's pretty good, loud. Yeah, clear. Yeah, so that's gonna be the option for right now until you know Tesla comes out with a better way of doing it. But yeah, there you go. All right, guys, enjoy your uh, Netflix. The second thing is, is the tiltable screen, right? We didn't see that in the menu. And according to what engineers said at the event is that they're still perfecting that design. The mechanics are there. It'll be software unlocked via a software update. And then thirdly, we did not find this in the software is the noise cancellation. They're built into the head, they're built into the seats. In fact, right here on these perforated seats, Right here is where there's a device. It's actually really hard here. Um, you can feel that there's something here on the seat and that's where it's built in. Um, that's where some of the technology is built in according to the manual. So I think that will be also unlocked uh, via software update. Uh, as of right now, we've got this. So, okay, now I've got a PlayStation 5 Bluetooth controller. It's in pairing mode. Okay, That'll be the first there it one. is, yep. Okay, so PlayStation 5 controller will not pair. Uh, maybe it's a, I don't know, should be a, just a basic Bluetooth controller and should work. Uh, we saw Xbox working, so I don't know why uh, PlayStation 5 controller won't work, but that kind of sucks. I really like the PlayStation 5 controller. Uh, probably be unlocked in a software update. I mean, listen, if iPhones can work with both um, uh, PlayStation 5 controllers and Xbox controllers, I don't see why the Tesla wouldn't. So, uh, yeah, there's another question answered. And then here, you've got the same things like the Y, where you can actually drop down the seats from the trunk. So, if I go over here, and I want to drop down this seat, drop. No, it doesn't auto drop, it just unlocks it. So then you can push it down. But here is the seat. It folds down and you can see the access into the trunk from here. Okay, so the both left and right seats have a button on the sides as well as a button in the trunk. But when you do the center, uh, Ron, show me how to do the center. Press a button. There's a little hidden button on the middle of the, of the headrest. Go ahead and push it and then pull it down. <laughs> Look at that little button. Right here, let me show you. 
this little button right here. Nice subtle. little Lots subtle unlocks. hidden accent. You've got the carbon fiber accents here. And then this opens up to show you tons of storage space. Of course, you've got phone charging. Cubby to hide your, uh, hide your stuff. You guys are telling me everything I don't know about. And then boom, it closes up real nice. You got the, the coat hooks right up there as well as a, you know, the speaker, the light. So same large size, you know, trunk. And then you've got the, the sub trunk down here with plenty of space. Shout out to Tesla owners of Silicon Valley. Huge, huge space here uh, in, the, in the trunk, typical Model S trunk. Push button up here, close. We've got the upgraded wheels on this ride here white interior which looks absolutely amazing the carbon fiber accents look super super slick there's a little bit of fabric in the doors that are just in this inset right here both for the front and rear so you'll see the front as well okay so we have uh, seen a lot about the vehicle but you guys had some driving questions right about using the yoke and u-turns and auto shift so let's answer those for you so Logan, when you first got it, it was weird to get used to? Yeah, definitely. Let's do so, a three-point turn here and go back that way. Sure. It's pro this is probably, like, let me... Oh, car behind you. Oh, the bus. Classic versus... Okay, so you shift in reverse, fairly yeah. easy. Swipe up for drive. And boom. So I don't think that takes any less time no. than a standard car. No, it's just like, it's just you got to get used to it. Yeah. But you know, after the first night I picked it up, I wasn't used to it, I got to say. But right now you can see me driving it pretty comfortable. So no problem at all. Now, now let's do a U-turn somewhere. Let's go right. Because in the residential, it's a little bit, I think, easier and safer. And one hand, one hand driving is also not a problem. Yeah, I see that you've uh, you've got my palm trick down. <laughs> <laughs> Feel comfortable. This is just kind of cool to watch how you drive with the yoke. Because a lot of people have that fear, right? It's like, oh, how does it? Oh, that was interesting. Still a three-point turn. But, uh, so how's the turn radius? It's. I think it's pretty good. For a big car. How do you yeah, like the so big? Yeah, I love that that whole openness right, right there. It's just yeah. so you don't really think about it. Right. No, coming from a you know having like dri driven some two seaters, mm -hmm. you don't always get quite the visibility. But this car is it doesn't really have like too much of a blind spot. I say. Yeah. You can see everything pretty clear, the front, the side, no problem. Should we go, keep going or? Yeah, let's we'll go right here. Sure. We'll do like another U-turn. Sure. It's kind of interesting that when you did the U-turn, you did it hand over hand, which I would feel a little bit like uneasy about at first, just because you're not used to the steering wheel, but it seems like you've gotten fairly used to it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm really used to it now. You know where to grab it to do, yeah. like for me, the U-turn is still seeming like I would just do the palm rotation one, which seems to be the easiest. No, for you see us going to LA like this. For your one-handed driver, right? yeah. yeah, it's definitely not a problem. I see know. you resting your arm right there. Yeah, it's 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 comfortable, man. It's comfortable. This is great. Yeah, and you know, always, if you want to driving um, one-handedly. Always keep your setting in comfort because in sport oh, yeah. the steering wheel gets so heavy. Oh, I mean, interesting! Can't even turn it like, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty heavy right now. So you can still do it, it but it's not comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I just gotta do it in comfort, I guess. Yeah. Let's see. No problem with the yoke. Yeah, you can do two-handed, one-handed. And I was just telling them that if you are driving in a high speed, yeah, it, it actually feels better. Like it's like grabbing a, you know, controller in yeah. a sense. 
it's uh, I think it's easier to um, you know control this car in a higher speed have you ever wheels. pulled it up like thinking it's a plane <laughs> <laughs> I love it because you know model 3 I didn't I didn't have a problem with it but I almost prefer having a dash Having just that navigation yeah. front and center right. yeah. is kind of nice. One thing I noticed though, because, um, you know, in the Model 3, you don't have the dash. You can't really see the um, the instructions here. So when you put in navigation, let's say if you, if you go into some random address right now. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really, like, opens it up for you. Yes, because you, you have it over now. there. Yeah, I have it over there. Yeah. Here. And that's probably why this software is for S and X only right now. I think that, you know, I think we will see a version or flavor of this for Model 3 and Y at some point. But um, I don't know, the engineers made it very clear that this is very specific for this car. And it probably has to do with the way it's gonna be able to handle both the front and rear and a lot more. All right, so we're pulling into a McDonald's. We'll go and park like back over there so it'll be really obvious that we went into a spot. So we're driving in to the spot right now. It's quiet though. And then we'll just put the car in park. Okay, and then I wonder. Get out and get out. No, I don't think you have to get out. I think when you get in, you put your foot on the brake and it should just automatically should put you in reverse. Right. Put my phone break. Actually, look, it says tap to activate reverse. Ooh, so nice. when you get in and you put, oh, look okay. at that, boom, immediately into reverse when you put your foot on the brake. Nice. No shifting of the gears, no touching of the screen. Nice. You just come and go. So now let's try the same thing and then back into a spot. Should automatically put you into drive. Oh yeah, it's back into the spot, the same spot. Okay, so you have to back into a spot. Back in, yes. Yes. And then I've got a tricky one for it. Parallel? No. It won't do par- I don't, uh... Actually, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so now we're reversing into a spot. Alright, put the car in park. Okay, we pretend like we get down. And you'll see, it already preemptively tells you on the touchscreen. I don't know if you guys can read it. But just tap the, uh, tap to activate the, to drive. And so when you get back in, you put your foot on the brake. Ready to go. And you're ready to go. Look, he didn't Ooh. shift anything. Yeah. So now, nice. now go ahead and um, let's let this lady come in. See where you're at right now. I want to park like in the middle. Okay, so we're reversing into a spot that's in the middle of the parking lot. So you can go forwards or backwards in this spot. And then we're going to put it in park. And because we reverse into it, it's going to want to drive when it gets out. Kelvin, go stand in front of the car. Really? Do you trust? <laughs> yeah. i dead serious. Because we won't even have to drive. It'll tell us right away which is the right way to go. Because it should see you and not want to go forward. Okay, so Kelvin's going to stand in front of the car. And uh, now, look! Look at the screen! It automatically tells you to reverse because the sensors detect Kelvin! Yep. Smart parking! Oh, God, it's amazing! Look at that. Okay, so we just got back in the car and you hit uh, the brake yeah. to start the car. And it's already in reverse. Genius! This car! What if there's someone in the front and back? Oh, if there's someone in front and back. I mean, we could test that. You want to try it? Sure. Let's try it. Front and back. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now, why don't we go uh, forward and park? Wait, wait. Go forward? Yeah. Oh, shit. And park. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we just hit park. And now we've got Kelvin in the front, and we've got Rom in the back. Put your foot on the brake. Tap to activate drive. Press so it wants drive. to go forward. Um, so when you have someone in front and back, it doesn't know which is the right way to go, because obviously. So at that point, you're going to have to use your own intelligence. Um, but other than that, it, it's pretty damn smart. It's pretty slick. It is. So just getting ready to leave here, and I did notice that there seems to be a a PPF just in this corner panel here that uh, came default from the factory. So that's kind of interesting that Tesla's uh, including that little bit of PPF there. Um, yeah, tidbit. 
Thank you so much for bearing through this 40 minute video. I just had to show you everything. And now hopefully it answered a lot of your questions and gave you a really good inside look at the Model S Plaid. Special shout out to Logan, the owner of the vehicle and Tesla owners of Silicon Valley. If it wasn't for my local owners club, I wouldn't know Logan and I wouldn't have seen a plaid and you would not know any of this information. So shout out to Tesla owners of Silicon Valley. Follow them down on Twitter. I'll put a link to them down below. But let me know, what are you excited for on the plaid that's there now or that's coming via software? What can't you wait for? Uh, leave them down in the comments down below. Remember, again, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like this video so more people can find it and learn about plaid. I'll catch you guys next time. I'm going on a trip this week, so look for that video about road tripping in your Tesla coming next. Catch you guys later. See ya.